Hello doctors, welcome back to our channel. Today we are going to see the continuation of our previous video, Cardiac Murmur Part 2. If you haven't watched Part 1, please do watch. It's on the description box. Okay, let's get jump to it. Today we will see about continuous and systolic murmur. Let's start with systolic murmur. Systolic murmur has three types. Those are ejection systolic murmur, pan systolic murmur, and late systolic murmur. Okay, first ejection systolic murmur. In the name itself, you can understand that murmur happening due to the problem with ejection, which means blood in the ventricle can't pass easily due to the narrowing of the orifice. From this, we are getting to know in which case we will see the ejection systolic murmur. Those are aortic stenosis, pulmonic stenosis, hypertrophy obstructive cardiomyopathy, which we will see the subvalvular aortic stenosis, and tetralogy of Feller, which we will see subvalvular pulmonary stenosis. I am trying to make videos more conceptual and concise because we don't have super brain to remember everything we read. So, if you understand the concept well, it will help you in your exam as well as in your life. In ejection systolic murmur, we can see murmur peaks at middle of the systole. Let's see pan systolic murmur. In pan systolic murmur, the intensity of the murmur is almost same. We can see this murmur in mitral and tricuspid regurgitation, also in ventricle septal defect. Now let's move to late systolic murmur. We see this murmur in mitral valve prolapse. Let's see the normal structure of the mitral valve. The valve is attached with the cauda tendinae and the cauda tendinae is attached with the papillary muscles. In case of myocardial infarction, the papillary muscles are damaged. So the extension of the cauda tendinae will lead to mid-systolic clicks. If you remember our previous video of jugular venous pressure, usually we will see bulge due to the pressure in the ventricle. But in case of mitral valve prolapse, the bulge is much higher than the normal. If it is progress, it leads to leaking of the blood. So we hear late systolic murmur. The reason of mitral valve prolapse can be Myxomotus degeneration, ascaf nodules in rheumatic fever, ischemia in myocardial infarction, infections, and in Marfan syndrome. Let's see the treatments. So, the treatment of asymptomatic patients, we use propanolol. If the presence of subsequent features, treatment can be valvular plasty. In here, we don't treat with propanolol. Propanolol will decrease the heart rate, so it increases the longevity of the heart wall. Okay, now we will see the continuous murmur. Before that, I want to ask you a question with you guys. Let's assume a patient having a mitral stenosis with mitral regurgitation. In this case, we can see pan systolic murmur due to mitral regurgitation and mid diastolic murmur with pre systolic accentuation due to mitral stenosis. So, if you see here, the murmur happening in both systolic and diastolic phase, will it be a continuous murmur? If you know the answer, comment below. If you want to know, follow this video. So the answer is big no. Why? Because we already said there are two characteristics to be a continuous murmur. Those are murmur present on systolic and diastolic phase and the second one is peak will be on S2. In here, it is not completing the second characteristics. Even in the patient having aortic stenosis with aortic regurgitation, we can see ejection systolic murmur and mid diastolic murmur. But this is also not an continuous murmur. So, from this, we can conclude combination of murmur cannot be continuous murmur. Let's see contraction of aorta. It means narrowing or constriction of a portion of aorta. Most common site of contraction of aorta is distal to the origin of left subclavian artery. Due to the narrowing of the aorta, Blood obviously go through the collateral circulation as a compensation method. In here, the collateral arteries will be intercostal arteries. High pressure of blood in aorta which passes the narrow collateral vessels which leads to turbulent flow. Blood will continuously move from the proximal to distal part of aorta causes continuous murmur. Continuous murmur present in coctation of aorta which seen in Turner syndrome. But remember, coctation of aorta is second most common of Turner syndrome. The most common cardiac lesion in the Turner syndrome is bicuspid aortic valve. By the way, bicuspid aortic valve means aortic valve have only two leaflets instead of three. Next, patent ductus arteriosus, which happens in congenital rubella syndrome. 
Next comes mammary sophil. It can be seen in pregnancy due to increased blood flow in the internal mammary artery. Next we see in venous hum which is seen in dilated veins. Next we see rupture of sinus valvosa. Due to the rupture, there will be a communication between iota and right atrium. So the blood leaks from the high pressure to low pressure. And the last is peripheral pulmonic stenosis. Remember, I said peripheral, not valvular. In valvular pulmonic stenosis, presence of ejection systolic murmur. But in peripheral pulmonic stenosis, presence of continuous murmur, which happens due to narrowing of the pulmonary artery. Thank you for watching. Hope you see on the next video.